Hello, denizens of the internet. Well, this is a very exciting show for those of you who have been asking, where is another Hackintosh adventure on your channel? Well, you've come to the right place and the right time because we are doing a Hackintosh. <laughs> Okay, so as far as the actual build and showing you how uh, we installed all the little Tony Mac, uh, you know, software loaders on the, the little USB widgety doos uh, you know, I'm not going to do that because there's a ton of videos already that will show you how to do that. And if you can read, just go to Tony Mac um, x86 and the instructions are very, very clear. Follow them slowly. They're actually easier than assembling an Ikea shelf or, or a couch or a balundo or whatever they, finurndiga or whatever they call them. Um, I, th I think they should have Swedish names for, for these things. The Sternger. That's what I'm calling this from now. The Sternger. I'm installing it on the Sternger. But I will be showing you uh, just a couple things um, that I had to solve, which I think might be useful to you. So let's get on with the build. This is going to be a mini ITX. And uh, for this, we were inspired by this Cougar Kubi, <laughs> Kubi QBX. Uh, case which looks pretty pretty cool and has gotten some good reviews so that's what we're going to be basing it around now because this isn't a super powerful build uh, we're doing this so we're using a, a, a core i5 what, what is it the 6400 6, right and we're using well a top of the line um, board here the gigabyte gaming z170n so this uh, should be a really, really good and compatible Hackintosh board. In fact, we know for a fact uh, it's a very compatible Hackintosh setup. Uh, we've got a knock to a fan, which we're actually quite um, excited about. CPU cooler. It is tiny. It is really tiny. And the boot drive is going to be an, a Kingston SSD. Uh, that little uh, dongle there, the USB stick, that's what we're going to use to install um, OS Sierra on this box, and then uh, your standard uh, Vengeance Corsair. RAM. Low profile memory. Low profile, because this is going to be a small box. Although you're supposed to be able to cram a full size GPU in that thing, aren't we? For reference. Yeah, my son is determined to put this old 6700 in there. It's not 6700. GTX 670. 670, sorry. My very first graphics card. This is the power supply. And what's also cool about this uh, mini ITX case is that it will take an ATX power supply, but you have to make sure that the power plug is arranged in a, in a correct way. There's a warning sticker. Oh, there it is. Attenzione. Orientation of the power plug. Eh, it's not working. Yeah, so you have to make sure that you buy a power supply that uh, is properly oriented for this for this box. So there you go. Uh, oh, and finally, we've got a Bank, bank Q. I, I never know how to pronounce it. It's Ben Q. Some ben people Q? pronounce it Bank, but it's, I know more people that pronounce it Ben Q. Exciting Logitech keyboard. So what we're reviewing in all of this is just the Logitech keyboard, the uh, $16 mouse included keyboard. So there you go.
Okay, another Hackintosh experience has been completed, and this time with a case that we've never done anything before. Now, I'm really attracted to mini ITX cases. I, th I think, um, for me, they're the most fun to build in because they're also the greatest challenge, but I'll tell you the number of features that this Cougar case has. It's small, and it'll take a 13-inch graphics card, which is extraordinary. It even has a space for a, a, a slim CD-ROM pop-up toastery thing up here, which I think is um, uh, fantastic. There's a lot of features in this, and you can configure this five different drives, various uh, uh, SSDs and full three and a half inch hard drives in various configurations. And in this particular case, we didn't need um, a, a GPU. We're going to be using the iGPU right off the Intel uh, 6, 6400 i5 chip, um, which is the 530. So we, we could use that space for for a cable management. Um, so we bought this badass power supply that wasn't modular and had huge long cables, but didn't really matter because we just stuck it in there. Uh, but if we were going to uh, add a graphics card uh, into a, another build, then I would definitely get something modular and do some custom, buy some custom cables, shorter ones, so we can have a much neater cable management. Just the layout of the this Cougar case is, is fantastic. Now, it's open on both sides. It's got a, a mesh on both sides, so it's great for ventilation, but if you want this to be quiet, then you're going to need to get quiet parts. Really enjoyed the Cougar experience. As far as the Hackintosh build was concerned, well this was the most insane one that I've ever had to do. For the first time I had to modify my USB installer. Normally I would just build the installer, stick it in the computer, and it would it would work. It would install. In this particular case I could not get it to install. I kept getting stuck on the language selection screen. Uh, it's always recommended that you um, use a, the USB 2 port on your computers to uh, install. Now, on this particular motherboard, this is the Gigabyte Z170N, and it doesn't have a single USB 2 port. It's got all USB 3 ports. If you're having an issue getting past the language selection screen as part of the installation process with the USB key, this is what I did to solve it for my particular motherboard and for this installation of Sierra. Your mileage might vary. I clicked on Clover. I'm going to mount the EFI partition of the USB device. I'm going to open it, click on the Clover folder. I'm going to actually drag it on the config P list. And all I'm going to do is click on the Fix USB 1000. That's all you need to do. Very simple fix. And this, in my case, got me past the language selection screen. Now that only took an entire day to find out, but that's part of the fun. Once I got that installed, everything worked beautifully. And then the circle of death. Once I got past the language select screen issue, I had a successful install, but upon rebooting, I ended up seeing the circle of death now. So, okay, more research. I found out that I had to remove a specific text file. So I had the problem both with my installer and with my desktop install. Let's load up the EFI partition once more. I'm going to go to the Sierra USB installer. I'm going to open up the EFI folder partition and I'm going to go into Kext's other and I'm going to delete this, the Atheros E2200 ethernet.kext from the installer. Hallelujah! It worked. And I think that's part of the fun of building Akintosh is that, that final sense of, oh my gosh, it's working. I love this Cougar case. Just a ton of fun to work with. Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Bell thing. Give uh, the video a thumbs up if this was uh, at all useful. Till next time. So long, internet denizens.